today we're going to be talking about a picto chart or pick two chart, however you want to pronounce it. Um, basically, it's one of the most popular infographic tools, and we saved it for last in this Modern Lessons course because it's so powerful, and we wanted to at least give all the other ones a chance, a fighting chance. Uh, so a picto chart is probably the easiest and most interactive and intuitive way to build your own infographics. And all you have to do is go over to pictochart.com and you can log in with a social network of your choice, just like on Modern Lessons, or you can create it without that. So once you do that, it'll bring you to some templates and it'll show you uh, the different ideas and different varieties of infographics you can build. Um, there's a lot of pre-built ones. This is basically a pre-built infographic or visual. Uh, so once you click on it, on that, on that particular infographic, it'll show something like this. So I was just tinkering around with this right before starting this screencast, but, and I haven't done much to it. So let's get started. Basically, this is the interactive, very straightforward, web-based free uh, editor for PictoChart. So what you can do is, just like a lot of the other infographics creators, you can click double, double click on the title, and we'll call this 10 Reasons to Try Out Modern Lessons. And so let's say that that is exactly how you want it to be. But let's say we want it to look a little different. You can change the font right here. Uh, that looks a little blocky, so we'll make that a little smaller. There, now it fits a little bit bigger. You can make it bold, italicized, all that good stuff. All your usual text editors. Um, one of the most interesting things that I think that's almost like Photoshop is the ability to have layers. Uh, I don't know of a lot of other tool, web-based tools that allow for this. So you can click this guy right here and you can move stuff backwards a little bit so it'll go behind some of the layers. So as you can see, there's a red layer and then a little gritty layer. So we moved it back two layers. Let's move it back up, uh, bring forward it says. Um, and as you can see, it's a little blocked out, but we'll keep it at the very top. But you can click down here and really mess around with the layers, which is great. So if you've used Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, uh, or a lot of other premium products, then that'll be familiar. And so you can already get an idea of just how robust this platform is. Uh, instead of worrying about what the size is gonna look like, PictoChart offers a lot of default sizes. So you can do 600, 800, or 1280 pixels wide. We'll bump it back down to 600 pixels wide because that's a pretty standard size for websites that are gonna embed your visual uh, or infographic. So we'll leave it at 600. Uh, and up here, we can always add in more content blocks, which we're going to do in a second. So how do you do that? You go to add block and it says added new block. Pretty straightforward. And as you can see on the bottom, now we have a huge blank, blank space right here. Let's say we want to add in some icons to this new block. Um, we can just drag it from the bottom, but let's say we don't want to do education. Instead, we want to do entertainment ones. Uh, we'll throw in a movie camera because that's always fun. You can drag it and it looks terrible, uh, but if you want to keep the perspective, you just hold shift and drag and put it right there. And it's pretty easy to manipulate. You can change the color of it right here. Again, you can play around with the layers and really tilt it all around as much as you want. Um, it's extremely straightforward. You can even link to it uh, so as you can see here, you click on it, add URL, and you might be wondering, how do you make a clickable URL on a static visual image? Well, that's because PictoChart lets you embed and automatically creates your visual image as an uh, HTML page. So you can have an embed code where everything is clickable, and there's a bunch of links, and you can turn this into something pretty amazing if you want to spend the time doing it. So. If you're gonna spend the time on making a really fancy, nice visual, then definitely use PictoChart. Um, so we're gonna zoom out just so you can show, I can show you the whole thing. Um, obviously this template would take a little bit of time to totally make into what you want, but that's okay because we have the time, right? Uh, so let's say we wanna keep messing around with this, that we want to play around with the type that's here. You can hit Control All just so you know, uh, and you can change just about anything. So we'll add in some new text right over here. New text label, all I did was click down here and click the text button. Um, and we'll leave the new text label right up there. Hello. 
So pretty straightforward. Uh, under tools, this is how you do bar charts. It'll bring up a little visualization and sort of mini Excel sheet for you. So we'll just drag and drop this chart onto here and it brings up the chart wizard. So you want to know apples and oranges. It'll give you a couple samples uh, that you can use, for example, and you'll just hit continue and it'll do a fun little animation uh, once you hit create chart. So let's hit create chart and there you go. It pops up out of nowhere. Uh, so you can make that big, just like everything else. Um, you can make that nice and huge. So it looks like oranges, berries, and apples chart is looking nice. Uh, but it's really straightforward to use. Um, basically, there's a built-in tutorial and you can always save your work online once you create an account. And the best thing that I think, the key killer feature here is the export feature. So you can publish to HTML right here, which is extremely cool. Uh, and I believe that that is either unique to PictoChart or very hard to find elsewhere. You won't find these tools in a lot of places. I don't work for PictoChart and um, I just think it's cool. So one of the standard things that you can do is adjust um, how you actually export it if you want a static image so you can output as a PNG or JPEG file. But we're not going to do that right now because this is mostly a nonsensical template. Uh, let's say we want to see a preview of it. We can just click preview and this will, this is the HTML version. So let's say a lot of these things were clickable. If you had it set up as links, you'd click on it. But for now, it shows the chart when you mouse over it. It shows the exact numbers, uh, which is pretty cool. And if this uh, was a link, that would go somewhere. But we'll just go back to edit mode, and that will bring back all the familiar stuff. So you can also make it nice and wide, as I said. 1280 is pretty giant. I wouldn't recommend it. But uh, for the most part, it's really fun to use. You can always change the background have a mood board, which is always fun. Uh, so as you can see, it changes what the various colors look like. It's like a CSS cascading style sheet in case you're a web person. But that is about it. I hope that you have enjoyed PictoChart and want to give it a try yourself. Basically, I would always recommend that you save your work as often as possible. Try out all the themes that they have. As you can see, I just wanted to show you real quick. They have a lot and you can upgrade your account and actually pay for a lot fancier ones. Um, they have many, many built temp pre-built templates. Chart and feel free to do the work that you do.